Golden State Warriors. Sure, they got the win, but this was tough to watch. After missing over a month with a strained calf, Kevin Durant made his long-awaited return last night. The Warriors needed him. They sat on the brink of elimination, but his return was short-lived. Second quarter scored 11 points in 12 minutes. He was hot, and then he was not. Re-injuring his leg, had to be helped off the court by his teammates. Kevin Durant would leave the arena on crunches before the game ended with what is reportedly believed to be a torn Achilles. After the game, Durant took to Instagram with this post, Dub Nation, going to be loud as bleep for game six. I'm hurting deep in the soul right now, I can't lie, but seeing my brothers get this win was like taking a shot at tequila. I got new life, LOL. Hashtag dubs. After the game, a very emotional Bob Myers on the decision to let Kevin Durant play. He was cleared to play tonight. That, that was a collaborative decision. Um, I don't believe there's anybody to blame, but I understand this, this world. And um, if you have to, you can blame me. I, ru I run our basketball di operations department. And um, let me tell you something about Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant loves to play basketball, and the people that questioned whether he wanted to get back to this team were wrong. And I'm not here to... He's one of the... He's one of the most misunderstood people. He's a good teammate. He's a good person. It's not fair. It's not about basketball. It's about everything else. The shit that y'all don't care about. What do you think about the people who questioned Katie's heart and how long it was taking him to return? Them. No one knows more than Boogie Cousins what that feels like to have to leave basketball before the season is over. See, I'll start with you. How devastating is Kevin Durant's injury? Oh, it's an awful injury. It's an awful injury. And anytime you see an elite athlete, um, because injuries are a part of sport, but they're the thing as far as a career that an athlete is the variable they don't have control over. That, where they're going to play, most of the time they don't have control over those things. Kevin Durant tried. He tried to give it the type of effort, and typically in sports, as an athlete, you feel the pressure, the pressure to compete. You feel the pressure, not let your teammates down, and also, you feel the pressure of greatness. And that is, even though I might not be 100%, I'm going to try it. And that's where great performances, that's where we get them from, with a decision just like last night. The medical staff, they said he was cleared to play. Kevin Durant, his teammates needed him. So Kevin Durant tried to put himself out there. But for every athlete who was watching that last night, I hope they learned one thing from it. And that's listen to your body. Because your body won't lie to you. You can only listen to the doctor so far. You can only listen to the training staff, listen to the coaches, and you definitely can't listen to your teammates. Because if you listen to them, they're not filling your body, and they'll have you out there playing. That's why any type of teammates that I have, I never encourage guys. If they were injured, man, I tell them, know your body, man. Know your body. Whatever's going to happen, after you're supposed to be out there, you'll be out there. Now, once you're in the game and someone gets dinged or injured during the game, that's different. Then you try to tell the guy to suck it up, man. We need you. We like to have you out there. But this is totally different. And this was a prime example of a guy ignoring the signs that his body gave him the warning signs. He ran through those. A couple days ago, before uh, Friday's game, he worked out. Jalen Rose said it. I saw he had a private workout. It didn't go well. His body gave him a warning. And now it's, a, it's amazing that the doctors, because they're down three to one, then they cleared him before game five. It's amazing how doctors and the timing of games and season, how you get cleared. NFL guy blows out his knee. When does he get cleared? Cleared uh, about Labor Day. That's when, when the, the season's season getting start. ready to start. Yeah. So for me, unfortunate for Kevin Durant. I do understand what he was trying to go through because the bond that you have with your teammates that I will push myself beyond what I can do for each other, that's why we play sports. And last night, Kevin Durant didn't get a fair share for what he tried to accomplish in the pressure of trying to get back out there in an NBA Finals. Oh, man, I can understand. Two-time defending MVP, 
Absolutely. Still trying to fight for respect at this point in his life. Still trying to fight for respect. That's why Kevin Durant was out there last night. I've always loved Kevin Durant as a basketball player. And last night, he earned even more respect because he jeopardized his whole career for them guys. And the worst, the worst injury a basketball player can suffer is a torn Achilles. And now he either has a torn Achilles or a severely strained Achilles. And now, and he had already more than held up his end of the bargain with this franchise and this organization. Whatever his plans were, and we've obviously speculated enormously on that for this summer, when he agreed to come over and play with them, the off-court stuff aside, he has been, during the NBA Finals, their best guy in consecutive years. He has shown up to work. He is, he, on the court, he's done everything his teammates have asked of him. His coaches have asked of him. And yet, despite that, and I wonder who these people are, and I wonder if Kevin Durant has an idea of who these people are. Who was whispering in Tim Kawakami's ear that led Tim to write, if Clay or Looney or Curry or Green or Andre Iguodala had this injury 30 days ago, would the Warriors still be waiting for them? Because that wasn't Tim, that was, it, who, who was talking to Sam Amick, who he said sources that said, quote, there's confusion, angst, and quote, a question about pushing through the way Clay, Boogie, Iguodala, and Looney have. That frustration and irritation were growing, according to Sam's report, in the locker room or in the organization that KD wasn't out there. If I heard that, KD heard that. Of course. And KD then, they're on the brink of elimination. He goes out there and tries to give it his best shot, knowing if I don't go out there, and we lose, people will forever question, could I have gone out there? If I don't go out there and they come back from a 3-1 deficit and win, people are gonna forever question, how much did they ever really need me? It felt now, like a lose-lose situation for right, Kevin Durant. Now, now I'm in a spot where there are, being, there are people close to the team reporting that some people in this locker room wonder if I'm dogging it. So we went out there and for 12 minutes of the first 14 played, even though Kerr said it was gonna be short bursts. Those weren't no short bursts. The only short burst was his time on the bench. For those 12 minutes, he was the best player on the court. And now, a guy who, Chris, you said you had heard he wants to play till he's 40. A guy who people have realistically said could become the NBA's all-time leading scorer. Now he's gonna almost assuredly miss a full season of basketball and have his career potentially forever altered by this fork in the road moment. There were a lot of people that had their hand in the proverbial cookie jar, if you will, in making this decision between, I'm sure, Myers you saw and the training staff and Steve Kerr and the people around KD and Kevin Durant himself. Do you blame the Warriors for, for what happened to Kevin Durant? Is there any blame that you can place on anyone? Sports teams are gonna do what they do, and that's try to win games, and they're gonna push the product out there. They don't care anything about the athlete. Bob Myers, he was crying last night. But typically, they don't, this is what they do. They push the athlete to be on the court or on the field. It happens all the time in sports. And they should assume some of the blame. Absolutely. Because Kevin Durant hadn't been through a full NBA practice. Now, I know he might have been cleared for physical contact. He might have been cleared to practice. But he didn't make it through an NBA practice. He shouldn't have been playing the NBA Finals without being cleared, without going through that protocol. So what ends up happening, because you don't have time on your side, you take the shortcuts. Oh, man, he'll play with some of the backup guys. Oh, he'll play with some of the coaches. He'll play two-on-two, three-on-three. Had Kevin Durant participated in a full NBA practice before last night's game? No. And there is no doctor that would say, that's the way I'm going to bring him back into competition. And let alone, it is the most intense competition that he's ever been involved in in his career. And bring him back, see, it with what they said before the game was no minutes restrictions. No, I mean, and before the game. I don't believe that. I believe they just made that up. Okay, well, that's, I'm just saying. When you haven't been through a practice, it doesn't make sense. Like, it doesn't make common sense. I, people say a lot of things to get through that conversation. Sure. But there's no way Kevin Durant wouldn't have a minutes restriction he, he, he didn't make it through 12 minutes. Well, and so, and that's the, during, before the game, they said there wasn't going to be a minutes restriction, but what they did say was he was going to play in short bursts. Instead of, in the first 14 minutes, he, he played, played as, I, he played as much as anybody. I mean, he played 12 of the first 14 minutes before what looks like his Achilles popped on him. This is, I, as far as who, who deserves blame, I really, I circle back to what I said, 
I really want to know what what we read as external pressure, or if that was true. Because you, with you saying that, you're saying that Tim and them, what they reporting was true. So they, we've been reporting a lot of things coming out of Golden State. So to me, that was that the pressure for players to play is always there. No Tim releasing a story, any, that doesn't put any more pressure on us because people say things. I, I don't. I'm not going to validate it because I haven't seen the elite athlete who didn't want to be out there compared to what they were saying about Katie. No, but we we talked about yesterday whether or not there would be either people in the locker room or people around the people in the locker room saying why why isn't he there? And even if we take Tim's column aside, Sam Amick. I mean, he, he has quotes from sources, and I trust Sam Amick on this. Though. If, if, if that's what the external pressure was, what was being said behind the scenes to KD that didn't get out there, that maybe made him feel more pressure, I've got to play the seasons on the line, and now we might not see Kevin Durant play basketball again for 12 months. But no one can have an influence on a player. His body is his money maker. No one can make a player go out there. Kevin Durant is too experienced, he's been in this league too long, he is too good for us to say, oh, some rumor forced him. No, the greatest athletes also have the greatest drive. Michael Jordan, flu conditions, temperature. He shouldn't have been playing that game in Utah, but that great performance because he was able to get Came through it, we were legend. able to see it. So Kevin Durant